Well, the Clippers at that time were known as a um, basically a dumping ground, uh, a dumping ground for a lot of players who were either um, you know past their prime or or at their prime and ready to decline pretty quickly afterwards. And I think uh, most of the players felt if you got traded to the Clippers, uh, that was pretty much to uh, pretty much close to being exiled out of the league eventually. Uh, because the Clippers never really had any winning seasons. Uh, you know, we would struggle to win uh, 30 games out of 82. Uh, I remember we had T-shirts made up when, when one year. Uh, we were going for 30. Oh, my you know? God. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that's horrible. But that's that's the mindset we had. It, it was a joke. Uh, but, you know, the guys took it relatively well. Uh, you know, Bill Walton was a kick to play with. Terry Cummings, uh, Norm Nixon, you mentioned quite a few of them. Uh, Greg Kelster came down with me from Seattle and Mark Radford. So we had a lot of really great, talented players. But for one reason or another, we were all misfits. Uh, we, didn't, we didn't any longer fit with the team that we used to be with. Uh, Norm Nixon really came in with a sour attitude for for being traded from the Lakers um, because, you know, they had just drafted Byron Scott and he teamed up with Magic Johnson in the backcourt and Norm was expendable. So uh, all of us had those kind of stories and we just just hated it. Um, you know, it, it just I don't know. I, you know, I didn't have a lot of experience of comparing one organization to another. But from what I saw, what I experienced, Donald Sterling was our was our owner. Uh, the front office was always chaotic. Um, you know, there was always rumors of the team either not paying their bills or not being able to stay at the sports arena in San Diego. Uh, so just always having that stuff circling around is is just not conducive to a winning environment. 